What's going on, y'all? It's Jerry the OG. I mean, Jeremiah here. And today we're going to be looking over Nin Impact's controls and mechanics. I want to give a special shout out to Anise for supplying the Nin Impact community with this information. Since there are a lot of us that are not at Evo Japan 2024, this is very useful for those that are trying to learn a game and want to understand how the game works now obviously i'm not going to be able to sync up a lot of footage if any footage due to the fact that i don't have the game in my hand so i cannot give you examples of how these mechanics work so i'm just going to try to illustrate the ideas of how these mechanics may work in the game based on what i am reading so without a further ado let us begin starting off with the basic actions we have standing impact it's an attack that blasts the opponent forward. When activated, the character will not be afraid of attacks from other than the lower position. So I'm assuming that means it is a standing normal and it hits the opponent forward, but you're vulnerable to lows. Crouching impact is a, basically a launcher and it says when it hits, excuse me, it, it's telling you to go straight up, upright or up left when it hits. It's basically telling you to jump cancel after that so you can follow up. Uh, piercing attack is... Piercing attack while touching the opponent is a powerful attack that blasts forward while nullifying the opponent's guard. So I think that's supposed to be some type of grab, but I'm not 100% sure. Piercing attack is some type of grab and piercing tech is the, is the grab tech. But they're not calling it a grab, they're calling it an attack, a special... It's a unique type of attack, but you can also tech it. That's interesting. All right, bounce guard, that's basically push block. Overgear is basically Bloody Roar 1's rave mode or Bloody Roar 3's Hyper Beast or Marvel vs. Capcom 3's X Factor. Quick gear is a risky mechanic to use because it sacrifices your ability to passively heal yourself. Well, not the ability, but you know, you sacrifice the recovery gauge to go into quick gear. Switch is pretty self-explanatory as how you switch to the other character. Assist attack is basically calling out your assist to do said assist attack. Ejection attack is basically forcing your opponent's other team member to come out while hitting the character that you're fighting. So basically, if you're fighting Gon and you want Karapika to come out, you will do an ejection attack on Gon to bring Karapika out. Reversal switch is essentially switching your team member into the fight while you're blocking. So if you're getting hit by Killua and you're playing Hisoka, but you want to bring out Biscuit Kruger, for example, you're going to do a reversal switch to bring her out. So you don't have to eat the pressure anymore with Hisoka. You can eat it with another character that has more health slash resources. Switching arts is basically doing a super and then doing another super with another team member on your team, as long as they're alive. Unison arts is basically all three of your characters doing a super at once consumes 100% of your aura gauge. Aura Arts is the super move. Level 3 Aura Arts consumes 300% of the aura gauge per person, which basically means that if you do the level 3 Aura Arts, your meter is going back to zero. I'm sure when the game releases, they'll have like examples of how these mechanics work, but it's good that we are seeing this now so that we're prepared in the future and plus we still have the footage to go off of based on what we've seen at EVO Japan. So it's pretty nice regardless. Now we're going to move on to the controls on how to play the game. To be honest, I probably should have did this first, but it is what it is. All right, so going to the rush button, this is really interesting because it's basically a free combo button. That's all it is, essentially. It's just a free combo button. Arts is, are the supers, which is R2. We have a medium, we have a light, we have a heavy, and we have an impact attack, which is basically uh, the special button of this game. Uh, they tell you how to jump, they tell you how to block, which is just holding back, crouch with down. Um, they also have an arcade controller variant, but I'm not gonna look over that because I'm a pad player. But if you wanna look at it, feel free to pause the video and look at it or just click the image in the description. What's cool about this is that they're showing off Gon's stance with his arts, which is the Jajankin stance. If you do the arts and then you press square, he'll do rock, which is the light equivalent. Then he'll do scissors, which is the medium. And then he'll do paper, which is the heavy attack, which, and it looks to be a projectile as well. So that's pretty neat. I actually really do like that. Um, it's really hard to tell if any other characters will have stances because we've only seen Gon like visually show that. Maybe they do have stances and we've only seen Gon's and we just haven't seen the others and nobody really knows how to play the game even though it's similar to Marvel 3 but still. And as mentioned earlier, 
The rush button is a free combo button essentially. It's saying that the vulnerability of the initial attack and dealt damage depends on the rush combo type. So you can press L2 and then do a light version by mashing light attack or mashing medium attack or mashing heavy attack. And it's showing the differences here actually, which is interesting. Oh, wait, wait, okay. I'm about to say, I thought I couldn't zoom in. Okay, so light rush has mild vulnerability, mild damage. So pretty small damage, relatively speaking. Medium vulnerability is medium damage, which I mean, all of these are self-explanatory, but bro, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the biggest fan of this. But I guess if you have good defense, this really shouldn't be an issue. But yeah, this is definitely interesting. I was not expecting this game to not have motions because in my prior video, I was always talking about quarter circle motions and this and that and the other. And I was basically overanalyzing it without realizing. But truth be told, I did not know that they were going to take this approach with this simple combo structure, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I'm not upset. Overall, I do find this pretty cool. I'm glad that we all get to read this as people who unfortunately don't have the luxury or opportunity to go to Evo Japan 2024. So big shout out to Anis KX Hemi on Twitter for dropping these images online. Um, it was really cool to see how to play the game in terms of, you know, what buttons are what and showing us the basic actions and how those actions function and, you know, understanding, you know, that we are in different times and fighting games aren't made just from the competitive players but also the casuals you know so casuals also make up a percentage of the audience and not just the people that play the game competitively so i'm not against easy combos with the rush button being a thing as long as they you know scale the damage down for those auto combos essentially um i think it would be fair to people that actually put in the time the days and the weeks the hours the minutes every second into learning the foundation of their characters and what buttons do what for their character you can't have twinkle star 78 doing 65 percent damage because he took less time he or she took less time learning how because of one button and mashing you know i just think that that's a little um comical i can see how it can feel insulting you know i get the mental process behind someone that dedicates their time to learning their character or characters when something like that could happen you know or does happen it's just you know i do think that's a little weird but other than that i do like that we have access to these and i have fun reading and i'm enjoying my time making videos on this you know hunter hunter is one of my favorite anime ever like top three and the developer aiding i like what they do at least bloody roar is in my opinion their best fighting game series ever with the exception of bloody roar 4 of course i want to continue seeing where this goes as time goes on so thank you all for watching this video i'll catch you guys in the next one you guys take care and i hope you enjoyed peace